Good morning, Crocker House Camp! Good, Good morning, Miss Caitlin! It is Tuesday, June 16th, and I'm so glad you've joined us this morning. Start by stretching out really big and really small, as tight as you could go, and really big, and shake it out. <laughs> and stick your tongue out and write your name in the air with your tongue. <laughs> Dot your I's and cross your T's and write your name with your elbow. And your other elbow. Really fast. And with your tushy. And with your toe. And with your other toe. Very good. And take a deep breath and we're going to sigh. And another deep breath. We're going to do a little roller coaster. start with Wadaliachi and we'll start out nice and slow so you can follow the hand movements. Ready? Wadaliachi, Wadaliachi, doodly do, doodly do. Wadaliachi, Wadaliachi, doodly do, doodly do. It's the simplest thing, there isn't much to it. All you gotta do is doodly do it. I need my soul wherever I go. It goes doodly doodly do a little faster. Waddly achi, waddly achi, doodly do, doodly do. Waddly achi, waddly achi, doodly do, doodly do. It's the simplest thing, there isn't much to it. All you gotta do is doodly do it. I need my soul wherever I go. It's doodly doodly do a little faster. Waddly achi, waddly achi, doodly do. Woo! Waddly achi, waddly achi, doodly do, doodly do. It's a simple as thing. There isn't much to it. All you gotta do is doodly do it. I need my soul wherever I go. It's doodly doodly do a little faster. Waddly achi, waddly achi, doodly do. Woo! Okay, if you don't know how to do your birdman mask, you go like this, you put your middle fingers at the base by your chin, and you flip your wrists up like that. And that is your junior birdman mask. You can also just do it like this. It makes you look like you have wonderful feathers on your mask. I like to do it like that. <clears throat> so repeat after me. Up in the air, the junior birdman. Up in the air, the junior birdman. Up in the air, upside down. Up in the air, upside down. Up in the air, the junior birdman. Up in the air, the junior bird man. With his nose down to the ground. With his nose down to the ground. When you hear the grand announcement. When you hear the grand announcement. That his wings are made of tin. That his wings are made of tin. Then you know the junior bird man. Then you know the junior bird man has turned his box tops in. Has turned his box tops in. It takes five box tops. It takes five box tops. Four bottle bottoms. Four bottle bottoms. Three coupons. Three coupons. Two nickels. Two nickels. And one thin dime. And one thin dime. So get your box tops in, get your wings of tin. So get your box tops in, get your wings of tin. And you can be a bird man too. And you can be a bird man too. All right, all together, up in the air. Up in the air, the junior bird man. Up in the air, upside down. Up in the air, the junior bird man. With his nose down to the ground. When you hear the grand announcement that his wings are made of tin, then you know the junior bird man has turned his box tops in. 
It takes five box tops, four bottle bottoms, three coupons, two nickels, and one thin dime. So get your box tops in, get your wings of tin, and you can be a bird man too. Don't wash them yet, not yet, not yet. Black socks, they never get dirty. The longer you wear them, the stronger they get. Sometimes I think I should launder them. Sometimes I think I should launder them. Something inside tells me don't wash them yet, not yet, not yet. to our first acting lesson. Uh, what we're going to do first and foremost is warm up. Warm up our mind, body, and our voice. So what we're going to do first is we're going to reach up to the sky. Just stretch as much as you can. If you want to get on your tippy toes, go get on your tiptoes and stretch everything out as high as you can. Go, go, go. Grab for whatever you're reaching for. That banana, that coconut, whatever you want. Uh, oh, it's too much. So break at your wrist. Let your wrist fall. And break at your elbows. And break at your wings. And break at your waist. Go all the way down. And just a gentle hang. Don't try and touch your toes. Just let you hang out a little bit down here. And hang out. Maybe do some figure eights with your arms as they're hanging loosely. We are going to roll up on 10, from 1 to 10, very slowly, one vertebra, one spine at a time. Ready, here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, halfway up, 6, 7, 8, shoulders rolling back, 9, 10. Nice, chin out, feet shoulder length apart, just hanging out like this, kind of actors neutral. Next thing. Go ahead and roll your shoulders forward on a wazoo. Make your face really big on wazoo. Make it really tiny on zoo. Okay, now do it. Wazoo, 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 wazoo. Backwards. Wazoo, wazoo. Wazoo, 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 a little faster, double time. Wazoo, 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 triple time. Wazoo, 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 quadruple time. Wazoo, 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 all right, now hold out your right arm and pat down your right arm. Then say, wake up, hand! Wake up, hand! And pat all the way back up and pat over. Bring your chest back. And pat down your left arm. Say, wake up, other hand! Wake up, other hand! And pat back up, pat around, pat down your right leg. Wake up, what? Wake up, what? Pat back up, pat over. Oh! And <laughs> wake up, other foot. Wake, wake up, other foot. And pat back up. And check it out. <laughs> okay, now we're going to do some tongue twisters. When you do these tongue twisters, you make your mouth as exaggerated as possible. You want to sound ridiculous. Enunciate everything. So let's choose one. Let's choose one everyone knows. She sells seashells down the seashore. So go ahead and repeat after me. Sally sells seashells down the seashore. 
Sally sells seashells down the seashore. Awesome, awesome. Let's do one you did in Morning Circle. Uh, unique New York. Unique New York. Unique New York. Unique New York. You know you need unique New York. You know you need unique New York. Irish wristwatch. Irish wristwatch. Irish wristwatch. Irish wristwatch. Swedish wristwatch. Swedish wristwatch. It's way easier to get these consonants, these hard sounds. Wrist. If you just make your mouth as big and ridiculous as possible, it's supposed to sound crazy. More, more than you normally talk. Um, let's do the lips, everyone. The lips. The lips. The, lips. the teeth. The, the teeth. The tip of the tongue. The, the tip of the tongue. tongue. The teeth. The teeth. The lips. The lips. The lips. The teeth. The tip of the tongue. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. Let's try and do it a little faster. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. Let's see how, let's see how much faster we can do it. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. Good thing you can just try as fast as you can do it. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. <laughs> it's great to see how fast you can get with that. Just practice it on your own. Um, now that we're all warmed up, we can get ready to do something else. All right, let's play a game. Let's play a game. Yeehaw! 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 yeehaw. yeehaw. <laughs> we're gonna do yeehaw. Um, this is a lot of. Oh hey, look at that. Uh, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, and we're just going to get it started. Uh, there are a bunch of things to it. There is Yeehaw, you send it over. There is uh, Hoedown. Uh, Hoedown reverses the Yeehaw. There is Barn Door, skips that person. There is Rattlesnake. You throw a rattlesnake down, everyone jumps up until someone, has to be one person though, stops, catches that rattlesnake. And then we have Fire drill! When there's a fire, everyone's got to scatter. Slow motion, carefully. Run. Ah, ah, ah. me. <laughs> All right. And that's it. We're going to jump right into it, okay? Uh, go ahead, start, Kayla. All right. Yeehaw! 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 Hey, Barn. Oh, skips over at it. Yeah. Yeehaw! 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 Hold down! Yeehaw! 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 Hold down! Yeehaw! Hey, Barn. Yeehaw! 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 Rattlesnake! Woo! Yeehaw! Oh, 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 hey, oh. I got it. Uh, yeehaw! 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 Fire drill. Oh, oh, I'm watching fire drill! <laughs> yeehaw! <laughs> yeehaw! Someone yeehaw! Yeehaw! Hold down. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Hey, Barn. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Hold down. Yeehaw! 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 Y
teach your families. <laughs> Hi, my name is Maddie Dawson. Today we are going to do some stage makeup. We are going to start with a cat. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab an eyeliner pencil that is black and you're going to start with your nose. You're going to kind of draw a little triangle on your nose with a little bump on the top of it. So we're going to start in the corner like this. And you're going to go down to the center of your nose down here. And then you're going to draw up. And then a little bump. It's okay if it's not perfect. It'll just make you a special cat. Okay. And then you're going to fill it in. Okay, and now you're going to take your pencil again and you are going to draw a line from the bottom of the nose that you just made to the top of your lip right here. This is called your Cupid's bow. You're going to draw a line connecting the two of them. Perfect. And then now you're going to draw an upper lip, but it's not going to be the actual shape of your lip. It's going to be a little smaller. So you're going to want to start not in the corner, but just a little bit in. And you're going to draw like a semicircle. And then you're going to also fill that one in. Okay, and then we're going to go back and we're going to make sure that our line right here is connected to the lip. Just like that. Okay. Now we're going to move on to whiskers. So with the whiskers, you're going to make, you can make as many as you want. So you're going to do, I'm going to do three on each side. So I'm going to make a little dot right here, right here, and right here. And then from those dots, just go like a little bit out, and you're going to draw one whisker, two whiskers, three whiskers. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So, one, two, three. And it's okay if they're not perfect. Don't worry about it. No whiskers are perfect. And there you go. You're a cat now. Thank you for joining. Now you can do this all by yourself at home. And if you do, send us email, email us some pictures of how it turns out. Bye, guys. Hi, guys. Um, this is a little extra video to learn the words to the Rose Rose song. You might have heard us sing it in Morning Circle. And a lot of you already know the words, but just in case you didn't, we decided to make uh, this extra little side video. So I'm gonna go through all the words and also they'll be printed up in your packet or you can print them off of the website, okay? Crockerhouse.info. So, <clears throat> the first part starts with Rose 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 Rose. We're gonna do a call and repeat. So I'll sing it. So you have to listen and then you repeat after me. So I'll sing it with you also while you're still learning it. So we go, 
Rose, 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 Rose. Your turn. Rose, 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 Rose. Will I ever see thee wet? Will I ever see thee wet? I will marry at thy will, sire. I will marry at thy will, sire. At thy will. At thy will. Very good. All right, let's put the put all four parts of that together. Please share and send it to us 
um, at the at, at Crocker House at hotmail.com um, and you can get all that info and all those words also at crockerhouse.info. All right? All right, guys, have fun. Okay, anybody have a story they want to hear? Peanut butter baby. Peanut butter baby. <laughs> Peanut butter baby. All right, some of you have sent me the video of a real girl doing a real baby. And I can guarantee you that's not Miss AJ and David, but it must be universal. Maybe sisters rub their babies down with peanut butter. I don't know. <laughs> but I know for a fact it happens because I was writing my first book, Finny the Fair. I was going to be a writer. I just had a little problem. I had three kids and none of them would behave at any time so I could sit down at the computer. It was always chaos. So I said, okay, I'm going to write when my First grader goes off to school and I'll be like, okay, goodbye. And then I'll take my two-year-old and I'll set her down to watch some cartoons and I'll put the baby down and then I can sit down and write. And so I send my first grader off to school, goodbye, have a good day. And I put the baby down in the bassinet, okay, have a good nap. And I come out and I say to my two-year-old, okay, let's watch some cartoons. No, no, but don't you want mommy to write her book? No. Well. Could you maybe play with something? I want to put some, some diapers on the baby. I said, no, the baby doesn't need any diapers, honey. Mommy needs you to, I want to put diapers on the baby. So I went to the toy box. I dug in and I got out her little baby and I got a diaper and an empty bottle of powder. And I said, here, you can put a diaper on your baby. Okay? Okay. So she sat down in front of Sesame Street and put the diaper on her baby, and I sat down at the computer. Once upon a time. And I hear the chair scooching across the full floor. Anjali, are you getting a cookie? No! Okay, we're not having snacks till later. Okay! Once upon a time, there was a little girl, but I hear the chair scooching across and banging into the refrigerator. Tonk! I'm like, Anjali, are you getting a cookie? Because the cookie jar was on top of the refrigerator. No! I look at the computer again. Once upon a time, I hear the cookie jar squishing across the top of the fridge. I go in there and there's this little two-year-old way up, reaching up and pulling the cookie jar. I said, oh, I thought you said you were not getting a cookie. And her arm in the jar, she said, well, I don't have one yet. <sighs> End of writing for the first day. The baby woke up. We all sat down and had cookies while we watched Sesame Street. The second day, I got prepared. I got the baby. I got powder, I got the diaper, I got a cookie, I got ready, I put the baby down, goodbye honey, have a good day at school, and I got ready to write. Once upon a time there was a little, okay, so I don't even have my first sentence yet, but I'm getting getting into the into the mode, and, and I hear the toilet flush. Anjali, are you in the bathroom? No! Right, well why would she be in the bathroom? She wears diapers, she wouldn't be she wouldn't be in the bathroom. So once upon a time, there's a little, a little girl, and I hear the toilet flush again. I think I walk into the bathroom. She comes back. She says, "Mommy, my baby go bye bye." Said, Your baby goes bye bye. Where'd the baby go? She went down the toy toy. We look inside the toy toy. There's no water. Oh no! You put your baby in the toy toy. I was giving it a bath. Oh dear, so I had to call the Roto-Rooter man. He came and he drilled down the toilet and popped the baby back out. Don't touch it. We put it in the washing machine, washed it out, dried it, put a little Band-Aid on its head, and a writing for the second day. The third day, I get ready. I am going to write. I've got this planned out. The bathroom door is locked. We've got the peanut butter. We've got, uh, we don't have peanut butter. We don't have peanut butter. We have a cookie. We have a baby. We have a diaper. We're all ready to go. Goodbye, honey. Have a good day at school. We're all bye and good night. Go to sleep, little baby. Okay, now, are you going to watch cartoons? Are you going to put a diaper on the baby? I want to put lotion on the baby. I said, the baby does not need any lotion. No lotion on the baby. You can do pretend lotion like this. I don't want pretend lotion. Well, why don't you give mommy just a few minutes so she can write, and you can put your diaper on your baby, and then we'll see. We'll have a cookie afterwards, okay? 
okay. So I sit back down at my desk. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived, uh, she had a backyard and she lived, uh, 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 typing, period. <gasps> Do I smell peanut butter? No. So she lived in the very far reaches of her very own backyard. She had a horse named Polka. <gasps> no, I smell peanut butter. And I turn around and there is that little girl. She has taken the Costco sized peanut butter and she shoved her arms in <laughs> up to the elbows. <laughs> and she appears like a surgeon. I put lotion on the baby. You did what? Did you put did you put the lotion on your baby? Or my baby? They put it on your baby, mommy! <gasps> we go running in and there's this little white bassinet with this little peanut. My poor baby has been completely covered in such a thick layer of peanut butter that his little eyelashes are going <laughs> Oh my gosh, I started to panic. Oh no, how are we gonna get peanut butter off this little baby? We could use bread. No, you cannot use bread to take peanut butter off of it. Yes, we can! She runs in, she gets the bread and comes back and goes, look, we can make a sandwich. She put it on his leg and <laughs> yummy! <laughs> So we wiped him down with bread, and we had mushy peanut butter sandwiches. And I got smart and hired a babysitter, so the next day I could sit down and finish my book, which you all know as Finny the Fair. <laughs> all right, I will tell more stories tomorrow. Bye. Hi, you guys. Today's creative task. This is one that's going to take some self-reflection. That means you're going to pay attention to what you notice about yourself. So one of the things about being creative is that we often take a lot of information in through our senses and interpret it in a way that allows us to make things. But to do that, you have to be able to be aware of how you're using your senses and sort of widen their skills. So think about today, when you are using the gift of sight, when you're looking at that sense of sight, notice what you see. And by that, I mean, it's not just, oh, I see a garden or, oh, I see Miss Jolinda. It's you notice what colors you see. You notice the textures you see. Pay attention to the way the light and the dark are playing in the shadows and in the sun. Notice the way that some colors make you feel calm and other colors really seem to be abrasive and see with your eyes noticing people um, opening up your heart to be able to notice them and see them and wonder about their lives and use your eyes to be able to pay attention to where you live how your house is made, what your yard looks like, what the street looks like, who your neighbors are, um, what's inside your apartment, what's inside your trailer, what are the places that you go to when you notice what's different between these places, what do my eyes see when I go into a library, what happened with the color, what happened with the light, why are my eyes taking in all this information and now suddenly I'm using them to read in a different way. That's one of our senses. One sense is sight. What's another sense that we have? It's right on the front of your face. It's our scent, right? Now, I don't know that you need to smell things to be creative, but you know when I'm writing something, I'm always paying attention to how what my characters might be smelling or what they might be experiencing. It gives information to us when we're creative. So if I said to you that there were cookies Instantly, your nose would, you'd be thinking, oh, the smell of warm baked cookies. But if I changed one word and I said, ooh, do you smell those burnt cookies? <gasps> ooh, burnt cookies, no, it's terrible. When we pay attention to what we smell and how we respond to that, it helps us be creative in the words that we use to describe things. They're not the same words that we use when we see things. But think of the words that we use when we describe smells. They're yummy, they're stinky, they're odorous. <laughs> There's lots of ways that our nose sense informs us. And I find that my senses really inform me about the way I create things. If I want someone to sense a skunk and the way it smells, even though I'm making a paper mache, 
I think about that so that maybe I have the tail really arched like it's gonna spray and people go, ew, they can almost smell it. But I think about those things. So we, how, how we see things matters, how we smell, and being aware of how smell makes us think. And I love how sometimes when you smell something like um, the rain on the street or pine needles or a certain flower or a perfume, you are suddenly taken back to an experience that smell memory is a part of us. I love that. So then after our nose and our eyes, we have other senses. What am I missing? I've only named two out of five of them. Blah, 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 blah. How about taste? So you go, Mr. Linda, what does taste have to do with being creative? Well, ask any chef what taste has to do with being creative. The most creative chefs I know are able to take the pungent taste and the bitter taste and the sweet taste and they can mix them all together to make the most incredible flavors. They're highly creative. And so that taste sensation, we kind of only have two modes. We're like, bleh, tastes icky or mmm, it's delicious. But there's so much more. Is it salty? Is it sweet? What's its texture like? How does it feel inside your mouth? Some things like I like nuts, but some people don't like nuts at all. I don't like things that are really smooth and creamy, but other people love that. So think about you and what you like and how it informs your decisions. So we see things, we smell things, we taste things, we hear things. So our ears are not just on the side of our head, just by an accident, they are picking up all the sounds that are around us. I love ears because ears help us listen. We can listen to simple things like the wind in the trees. We can listen to the sound of bees and the flowers. We can listen to the sound of the traffic. We can listen to the sound of the subway. We can listen to the sounds of horses neighing. We can listen to the sound of people talking. There's lots of things that we get informed by, but I particularly use my ears for creativity when I am listening to music. When I use these big old ears to listen to music and I can hear the rhythm and I can feel the feeling of the song and it takes me to a whole other idea in my head, um, listening to music and thinking of how creative the people were to come up with those lyrics and those melody lines and those rhythms and that I can even make that kind of music, which is a different kind of thing than listening to it. But if you're listening to things, you start to learn, you start to take in information and it informs your creativity. It really does. And so if we see things and we smell things and we taste things and we hear things, the other sense we have is touch. And I call this A and B. There's like things that we touch that have texture. Think about touching a soft kitty or even your hand on a cat when it purrs or maybe um, touching a hard linoleum floor and how cold it feels or um, feeling a, a burst of, of hot water in the shower or all the things that touch us and our senses. But the other thing that I tend to listen to for my creativity is that I watch what touches me. So there are things like when um, I'm at summer camp and I see the people that I have seen all these years and our eyes meet and we smile at each other. That touches my heart in a way that later I might want to make a painting about how it felt to have all of that love and friendship and joy all together in one place. Like maybe I would make a painting of the Crocker House and there would be all these flowers blooming and there'd be all these heart and music notes flying out as we all danced around the morning circle. I think about how things touch me that make me feel happy or sad or lonely or scared and I think about what that means and how it touches my heart. So the reason I shared all this stuff about our senses today and how it affects us is because when we become more aware, when we start really paying attention to what we see, to what we smell, to what we taste, to what we touch, what touches us in our hearts and what we hear we start to become more informed. We start to be able to put things together and in ways that are creative and ingenious. I like to think of creativity as being good problem solvers. We can look at things and because we're using all of our senses, we're being informed about what's really happening so we can find creative solutions. Sometimes just being lost in creativity 
that's one of the best things ever, where you can just be in what they call the autotelic flow. It's a place where you've used all your senses to interpret something and then you're using all of your skill to put it out there so that you can um, translate that for other people to see. There were a lot of beautiful artists that, over the centuries that have done that, whether it was in music or painting or dance or theater. So pay attention to your senses today. Listen to something, look at something, taste something, touch something, and listen to your mother. <laughs> I love you guys. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.